Welcome, friends. It is I, Girl Slash and it's time for the Beginner's Guide to Chunga. What's going to happen here is we're going to give beginner level information for players to learn how to play her in Conquest and in Arena, how to build her, do some don'ts with her, go over her abilities, a little bit on her background, and stuff like that. So, this is definitely for beginners so you can learn how to play her and get better at the game in general with her. And eventually, you'll find your way to having your own builds or playstyles with her on your own in the future as you build off these basics. So, let's get going. So who is Changa? Well, she's a Michael Jackson aficionado and the goddess of the moon. She's one of the few gods who can heal, and with the help of her Jade Rabbit, she is able to stay in lane almost indefinitely. Through her smooth dances and the ability to move around unhindered, Changa can be a hard target to pin down. If you want someone who can hold a lane and dance with rabbits, Changa's your girl. So let's go over Changa's abilities. First up is the passive Jade Rabbit. Changa can send her rabbit out to buy and sell a single item at the store. How long it takes is depending on how far away she is from the fountain. Another thing is, she also gains 25% movement speed bonus and no back pedal penalty when using her dances, which are her 1 and her 3. Pretty useful to be slippery. Her first ability is called Crescent Moon Dance. Changa attacks in a cone in front of her from left to right, and it's possible to clear an entire wave with that move. It also has a very short cooldown, so this is your main source of harassment. Her second ability is called Moonlit Waltz, and what happens is she spins and is invulnerable for 1 second. For every damage tick that hits her from an ability, during this invulnerability, she actually gains mana for herself and allies nearby. This is her main form of escape and is the reason why she's so hard to kill, besides her heal and evasiveness. Her third ability is called Moonflower Dance, and what happens is she twirls and hits everything close to her. And if she hits an ally, they are healed. If she hits an enemy, they take damage, and their healing is reduced by 50% for 4 seconds. This is what makes her such a strong force against anything with sustainability, because their healing just gets reduced so badly. And if you give her Divine Ruin, their healing is reduced by 90%. This is what makes her such a strong force in the solo lane, since gods with sustain are usually what go there. Lastly is the ultimate, Waxing Moon. She shoots a skill shot in front of her that does damage and stuns. What's interesting about this ultimate, though, is each god that gets hit with it is stunned for a second longer. So the first god's hit for one second stun, second god two seconds, three seconds for the third, four seconds for the fourth, and if you're unlikely to be the fifth god, you are stunned for five seconds. This is a really nice team fight game changer. So you want to be able to land that as much as you can, so look out for those shots. Changa and Conquest. Now for beginners, you should play her in the solo lane, and advanced, you can play her in the mid lane. The reason why solo for beginners is because it's a more comfortable spot for her, she doesn't have to worry about as many ganks, and because of that, she can hold a lane almost indefinitely, and that's great. Now the first half of the match is a farming phase for you, and you should be building counter to the other soloist. You should be building at least some CDR, but after that, physical protection, you're fighting a physical god, or magical protection, you're fighting a magical god, and what form you do is up to you. Maybe a Void Stone for Magical or a uh, Stone of Guy. It's really up to you what you should be doing against the opposing god, but you should be building counter to them. And during this first half of the match, you should be, of course, clearing out the minions as quickly as you can with your Crescent Moon Dance and trying to reduce their sustain using your Moonflower Dance. If you're playing very fast and evasive, the opponent should have a hard time hitting you and you'll have a good time harassing them and they'll be forced to go back to base, which gives you superior farm, or you'll weaken them enough that you can finish them off by doing a Waxing Moon, plus Crescent Moon, and Moonflower Dance. That way you can kill them and you'll have an even bigger advantage. Chang is very hard to kill, but to make it even better is you can ward the jungle on your side of things so that if you do get too deep and with a chance of getting ganked, you'll know the enemy's coming, which will allow you to get the heck out of there, and then they won't get anything out of you, and you'll still be a big problem for them. The second half of the match, after you've farmed up really well, is all about the team fights, of course. And your Waxing Moon, of course, when you get five people with that thing, can be really damaging to the opposing team. So you want to get as many opponents as possible during every team fight with your ultimate so that your teammates can absolutely destroy your opponents. That's really what you want to do in the second half of the match. And if you do all that correctly, you will win the match outright. You should, of course, finish off your CDR if you don't have full CDR by the second half. You should probably get either pen or power or more sustain and lifesteal for yourself. It really depends on what you're dealing with, and you'll get better at that as time goes as you play Changa more. But that should really be everything you need to know for Conquest. Some do's and don'ts for Changa. First up are the do's. You should be harassing the enemy god as much as possible, so you can force them to go back and they have to go back to base, which will give you farm advantage. Another thing that helps with that is healing your minions to maintain push advantage, which will force your opponent back, might even force your opponent to get hit by your minions. But because of this, you need to ward your jungle for potential enemy ganks, because they might come over to you if you get too deep into the fight. But that is why you should be saving your Moonlit Waltz for emergencies. You should only use that defensively to get away from bad situations. Never use it aggressively to get into a fight. Use it defensively to get away. 
Another thing to remember is she has a movement speed boost during her dances, so that is very useful for being very evasive and getting away from the opponent, or getting in to take them out. And lastly, try to hit as many targets as possible with your ultimate, because the more any guys that get hit with it, the longer the stun lasts, and the more bad news it'll be for them. Now as far as don'ts go, you don't want to use your Moonlit Waltz aggressively, you don't want to use it to get into a situation, you want to use it only to get out, so don't ever use it aggressively, which would be a waste of it. Another is, don't forget to use your rabbit for purchases. A lot of people with Chang'e forget that they can use a rabbit to buy and sell stuff, so you should be doing that whenever possible. So how should you be building Chang'e in Conquest? Well first you should open with Vampiric Shroud, with Shoes 1, and get an active with 2 potions, or just get a bunch of potions up to you. Now once you get to lane, you'll know what you're fighting, and you should be counterbuilding your opposition. If they're a physical god, Breastplate of Valor, because you'll get a lot of physical protection, cooldown reduction lets you harass more often, and 550 mana is pretty good. Up to you when you finish your boots, but you should definitely at least get one item to counterbuild before you get back to those boots. Now if you're fighting a mage, Void Stone's good for harassment, and being able to deal with their hits a little bit, or if you want to just hold a lane forever, stone a guy. MP5 and HP5 with stone a guy will allow you to stand a lane nearly indefinitely, unless you're getting harassed really well, and that will just allow you to overfarm your opponent. Now if they got good sustain, you can get Divine Ruin as well. The Divine Ruin passive plus your Moonflower Dance, you reduce their healing by 90%. That's really good, but you might want to get Divine Ruin as your third item instead of your second item, because you were going to want a little bit of defense. Now if you're fighting an ADC, which plays not a bad idea, because there should be two ADCs if there's one in the soul lane, because you always need one in the duo lane. So having two different gods who will be affected by the slowdown from the aura will be useful, and also just the physical protection and the movement speed boost will help you be very slippery and hard to kill by your opponent, and that'll be useful there. But if you're fighting a god that isn't giving you a lot of trouble and you want to be aggressive, you can go for two more. You'll be able to farm well, and you might even be able to kill them if they stay in too long, that'll be useful there. But if you don't like the risk of Doomorb, you could go for Warlock Sash or Book of Toth. Both will give you a lot of damage, and both can give you good sustain in different ways, so it's up to you if you want to use those. Now, once team fighting happens, you're going to want to get maybe Bancroft Talon, which will give you some good lifesteal, and also some good power to deal with your opponents if they get you low. Dumb Isolation will be really great for slowing down your opponents. If you harass a lot, you can get Spear Magus for penetration. Or maybe Rod of Ascouples if you want to heal up your teammates. If you feel like you're going to be more healy supporty in the, the late phase of the game, then you can go for that. And finally, Rod of the Hoodie to finish it off, give you a lot of power in whatever direction you want to go, and it'll be great. As far as actives go, these are what you should be getting. They're all very defensive, while Heavenly Jilly can be a bit aggressive. With Beads, you'll be hard to kill. With Aegis, you'll be hard to kill. With Combat Blink, you'll be hard to kill. And with Heavenly Jilly, you'll be hard to kill. But also, the 25% increase to healing will be great as well for your team. And also, when you stun an opponent and give your team speed, you'll just completely devour your opponent. With these actives, you'll be virtually impossible to kill. That's what's so advantageous to Changa and her build is you have so many ways to be defensive and make yourself pretty much unkillable. Changa in Arena. Now for Arena, I feel like the best way for beginners would be to play her as a magical bruiser. You should max out cooldown, give her some defense, give her penetration, lifesteal, and finally power. And I'll have a suggested build right here on the screen right now. And I really feel like this is the best way to play her in Arena for beginners, because you'll be able to clear lanes pretty well, harass the opponent very well. And if you get that ultimate on your opponent and hit all five of them, you will cause so much death for your teammates, and the fact you can do it basically every minute, you're going to have a good time with her. Weaknesses of Chunga. Now, Chunga doesn't really have any weaknesses. She's a pretty solid god. Her real weakness only is she can't burst people down. She has to harass them down until they're low enough for her to use her alt combo to kill. And that's it. There's no easy way to deal with Chunga besides, well, ganking her. But even then, because of her Moonlit Waltz, she can get away from ganks. And even if she can't get away from the first gank, she'll get away from the next one because she'll either get Beads or Aegis or Combat Blink or even Heavenly Agility, and she will never be caught again. Chang'e is incredibly hard to kill, and with the right preparation and play, she will never die. That is really how Chang'e works. And so because of that, really the best you can do against her is to just farm just as well as her and deal with other opponents, or try to catch her in a very bad spot. But if a Chang'e plays very good positioning, she never gets killed. That's just how she is. So in conclusion, Chang'e is one of the best solo gods in the game. She has good sustain, she has good evasion, She's able to clear a lane pretty well. The only thing she can't do is kill an opposing god, but she can harass them to the point that they go back, which helps her out anyway, because then she'll have superior farm. In the end, it is nearly impossible to kill her, especially once she gets actors on her, and in team fights, she can turn the tide instantly with that waxing moon of hers. So you always want to find those angles and just cause bad times for the opposing team and great times for yours. And that should be it for the Changa guide. As long as one person gets helped by this guide, it should be worth it. Now up next is going to be Vimana, 
and he'll be a lot of fun to talk about. And as always, if you want to talk about the God of the Week that we'll be discussing, we discuss them at 7 p.m. PST minus 8 GMT on Fridays on Scarf Plays at Twitch. And that is the guide right there. I had fun, a lot of fun watching, and that's what's all about. Having fun. Thanks for coming by. See you next time.